By now, most Georgians have sized up Omicron, the latest coronavirus variant. And for many, it's the least scary iteration of the virus. My, my hope is that with the virus, with, especially with Omicron, I think the, the data might be interpreted in a way that um, um, one, you know, while it's more infectious, it's probably less lethal. Overall, people are not as likely to be seriously sick from Omicron, especially for those who are vaccinated. And patients who show up in the emergency room sick with the Omicron variant are less likely to end up in the intensive care unit. What typically happens in the ICU is when you do have a vaccinated patient, you know, they tend to not get as sick, they tend not to get on life support. And when they do get on life support or they do get sick, their, their hypoxia, that low oxygen, improves much quicker. Um, and so you can completely tell who has and who hasn't been vaccinated. Mild illness is not what healthcare workers are seeing inside hospitals. The patients keep coming. 5,060, that's the number of patients hospitalized for COVID-19 statewide. 29.3% the percentage of hospitalized patients classified as COVID-19 patients. 87.9% inpatient beds in use statewide. 89.3% ICU beds in use statewide. Still, many are saying this latest wave hasn't been so bad. Yes, overall, it's, it, it seems to be a milder disease. Uh, nevertheless, People who we see in the hospital uh, still require life support, still have high risk of dying. Um, still, you know, their families are still affected. So it's still a devastating disease. But at hospitals like Northeast Georgia Medical Center, Brasselton, the picture isn't so rosy. It's the same. I feel like this is just like the beginning. Um, maybe even worse because I, the, the seems like the nursing shortage is, is more. Yeah. I wish people, particularly people that don't take COVID seriously, don't think that COVID is real, I, I truly wish they understood that they are just one connection away from something devastating happening from COVID. 18 out of our 24 patients have COVID diagnoses. Under a maze of machines, tubes, and wires, the patients are wrestling with everything from dangerously low oxygen levels to heart problems to organ failure. Some are on the brink of death. Typically in an ICU nurse's world, um, we are one to two, that's our ratio. So one nurse, two patients. Um, if you have a super sick patient in the ICU, they're requiring more care, you're having to monitor them more closely, then you have one patient. Um, so there are certain protocols with different types of patients where we have one because it's safer for the patient and for us. Um, with COVID, unfortunately, a lot of times we're having to bend and break those rules. Um, so you will occasionally see us having three patients. Um, and we call it a triple. So if you walk in and you have a tripled assignment, um, then that's a heavy load for that day. I really think it is hard to really know like the emotional toll and physical toll of being in the ICU during the pandemic, unless you're a nurse or respiratory or tech, you know, unless you're in the ICU doing it, you know, taking care of the patients, having to keep track of all the labs, the medications, you know, infusions, everything. Um, it's just really hard to understand if you've not done it. People just don't understand, you know, within the ICU, it's, it's bad. And when we say it's bad, we're not just making it up. <laughs> we're serious. And it is hard to leave here and see people like acting like nothing is happening. Roughly a dozen registered nurses and two doctors are assigned to the second floor wing of the hospital, which is oddly quiet except for the sounds of hissing oxygen, beeping monitors, and the gentle sounds of an acoustic guitar. <laughs> Healthcare workers are exhausted. The toll of the pandemic has been immense. We definitely have days that are really, really difficult. And I think unless you've experienced what we've experienced, it's difficult to even communicate to your loved ones at home. I mean, 
My husband doesn't work in the healthcare setting, so he, I could talk about how bad my day is, but he just wouldn't quite be able to capture that. So I think a lot of what gets me through are a lot of my fellow nurses. We um, are a great team and a great unit, and we do get together outside of work, just kind of go out to lunch, meet each other, bring our kids. Um, and so that's really nice to kind of be able to decompress because we all understand what we've been through for the last two years. I am very tired when I leave here and um, this time of year is especially hard, you know, cause it's dark when we come in, it's dark when we leave and I'll go home and sometimes it's nice if my daughter, like I said, she's four is asleep. Cause then I, you know, don't have to go home and give you know, more energy to being mom because I give so much energy to being a nurse that has to be here for my patients all day. And I do have some mom guilt for that, but you know, I know that I'm here for a reason, so I try to do my job the best I can. My fear is, is that, um, you know, as, as this goes on, um, more and more people are not going to choose to do ICU medicine. I know we were having people not wanting to do pulmonary clinic, you know, as far as medical assistance, um, because, you know, they, 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 they kind of know I don't want to go into that field. And so it is a fear. And I, and I think we are starting to see some numbers showing that, that, you know, we are having less people turn out to, to go to nursing school and, uh, and so forth. I love everything about nursing and I do look forward to a world without COVID so I can see more of what the old nursing used to look like.